Hello children, in this video we are going to discuss most expected diagrams. If you all are perfect with these diagrams, definitely 5 to 10 marks will be in your hand. Let us start first diagram. First diagram. So the question is that, even you can see the question screen also. What device other than a plane mirror can be used to turn a ray of light through 180 degrees? Draw a diagram to support your answer. Name an instrument in which this device is used. Children, so other than plane mirror, which device is used to uh, uh, turn the light ray through 180 degrees? First, we have to understand turning through 180 degrees means what? First, let us see in the case of plane mirror, dear children. So, here is plane mirror. If any light ray is incidenting normal to its normal to its surface, and already we learned that if any light ray is striking the normal to the surface of plane mirror, it bounces back, its path is retraced, its path is retraced. So, children, if you can observe in depth this one, the incident light ray is coming like this, okay, and the reflected light ray is going back the same path. Look at here. So, what is the angle between these two? Both are opposite. So, it is a 180 degrees. So, we know that generally plane mirror can turn the incident light ray through 180 degrees. That is fine. But other than plane mirror, what is the device? can also rotate the, can also turn the incident ray through 180 degrees and where we can use it. Children, other than plane mirror, the device which we are going to use is called total reflecting prism. Total reflecting prism. So, total reflecting prism is a device which also can turn the incident ray, incident ray through 180 degrees. It is very, very important. Richard, what is special to total reflecting prism? In this one angle, one angle means the angle between two refracting surfaces is 90 degrees, such as that other two angles are 45 degrees each. Now let us see how it can, how it can deviate the light ray through 180 degrees. Have a look. So children, here is A, B, C. It is a total reflecting prism, which means what? Here the angle is 90 degrees. And here is 45 degrees and here also 45 degrees, 45 degrees. Now, which is a BC is a hypotenuse. So, light ray should incidence normal to this BC. So, like this it has to incidence. This is how actually light ray should incidence. But it should look at here, if any light ray incidence normal to the interface between two mediums, what will happen? It will go undeviated. So, this light ray will go light ray will undeviated means light ray will go in a straight line path. But dear children, at this point, if you can see on surface AB, let us make a normal. At this point, let us say the point is P. Children, at a point P, light is moving from glass to air, that is denser to rarer medium. And what will be the angle of incidence? Let us see. Children, here, this angle is already 45 degrees, this is 90 and this is 45. And it children, this is going to be again 45 degrees. This is going to be 45 degrees, 45 degrees. And we know that the critical angle for glass air interface is 42 degrees only. So if you can notice this, at a point P, light is moving from denser to rarer medium and angle of incidence is greater than critical angle, which means what? Light is obeying the two conditions for total internal reflection. So light will undergo total internal reflection. So, such a that light will move like this. So, this is how light is going to be total internally reflected. Again, dear children, at this point means on AC surface, let us make a normal. Let us make a normal. This is a point Q. At this point Q, dear children, light is moving from denser to rarer medium. And what will be the angle of incidence? Look at here. Children, this will be 45 degrees. And this also will be 45 degrees only. And this is a normal. So, this will be 45 degrees only. Which means what? Again at point Q also, angle of incidence is 45 degrees. That is greater than critical angle. So, one more time what will happen? Light will undergo total internal reflection. So, that light will move like this. So, this is how light will get totally internal reflected. But dear children, so, as it is getting total inter reflected, by default what will happen, you know, this light ray will become again normal to BC. So, as it is incident normal to this BC, what will happen? 
it will go undeviated it will go undeviated so children this is how light is undergoing light is deviated through 180 degrees look at here so initially it is going like this but after after so much of process what is happening light is completely getting deviated means completely coming back so it is a both are opposite direction so it is a light ray is getting deviated through 180 degrees so this is a case where we will use in a binoculars okay let's copy it second most wanted diagram it is actually the question is draw a vi graph for a conductor like obeying ohm's law and what does the slope of vi graph for a conductor represents children it is graph vi graph they are asking us to make vi graph children it is very very important here we have vi graph let us see even iv graph also both are very important you should not get confused graph but these two are we are making for what age children ohmic conductors that is the conductors which can obey the ohms law for that the children vi graph will be like so we should be taken on that is potential difference should be taken on y axis i should be taken on x axis i should be taken on x axis so as it is obeying as a conductors like they are talking about the conductor which obeys the ohms law so relationship will be linear it will be like this so that we will get a uh, line straight line which is passing through the origin we will get relation for this what is the slope children slope means what is children we have to take a y components by x components that is v by i but from ohms law we know that v is equal to i r so from this v by i is equal to what is children r that is the resistance so which means what the slope of vi graph gives resistance but listen even iv graph they did not ask but let us see how the iv graph will be so by some i should be taken on y axis and here v should be taken on x axis let us see so here we get a graph like this which is passing through the origin same graph we will get the same graph we will get but let us see the slope of this graph dear children so slope is equal to y component by x component that is i by v the children as it is v by i is equal to r but i by v is equal to what will be it will be 1 by r that is what reciprocal of the resistance so children the reciprocal of resistance is called what conductance is called conductance so this is v i graph and i v graph children the graphs will be same only but the difference is that the slope the slope of v i graph will give you resistance whereas the slope of i v graph gives you conductance copy it now we'll see the third diagram digital as shown in a figure you can see the figure on screen also uh, ao is a ray of light incident on a rectangular glass block complete the path of the ray till it emerges out of the glass block look at it digital so here children is a b c d is a rectangular glass block now what happens when light light ao is incident like this so here is incident light ray let us say dear children dear children if there was no glass lab then what happens you know this light would have traveled in a straight line path light would have traveled along a straight line path but dear children here what is happening at this point at this point light is moving from rarer to denser medium obviously it will move towards the normal and first we have to make a normal let us say this pq is a incident ray okay dear children so at this point q it is moving from rarer to denser medium then what will happen dear children it slows down due to which it moves towards the normal so light ray is moving towards the normal this is how actually light ray will get refracted inside but dear children as it is moving inside as long as the medium is same it will move in a straight line path but dear children at this point if you can observe again let us say this point is r let us say this point is r here what is happening light ray is moving from glass to air that is what denser to rarer medium so whenever light travels from denser to rarer medium it moves away from the normal so it is moving away from the normal dear children but the important thing what we have to notice that emergent light ray is parallel to the 
what we can say the incident ray when it extended forward when you extend this incident light ray in a forward direction that and emergent light ray both will be parallel to each other and children here this is angle of incidence and it is angle of emergence which in the case of glass lab angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of emergence which means what dear children the angle of deviation produced by the glass lab is zero so glass lab does not produce any deviation in the incident light ray it only shift the light ray and dear children one more very important thing what we have to notice that so there will be a perpendicular distance look at here the perpendicular distance dear children the perpendicular distance between emergent light ray and virginal that is the incident ray when extended forward is called is called lateral displacement so here rs rs is a emergent light ray such as that xy let us say xy this xy xy we can call it as a lateral displacement lateral displacement so children pq is a incident ray qr is a refracted ray and r1 r2 or angle of refractions rs is emergent light ray such a way that i is angle of incidence and e is a angle of emergence and xy will be the what children lateral displacement just copy it the fourth diagram is is related to the electricity current electricity children if two resistors with a different resistance let us say r1 r2 are given so how can we connect in a series and how can we connect in a parallel which you look at here so first in a series let us say children so here is the first resistor let us say resistance is r1 and one more resistor dear children let us say it is r2 it is r2 okay now. so how to connect in series connection dear children so this is how we can connect to battery and key battery and key such that it is a positive and a negative so when you turn on the switch dear children what happens you know the amount of current i starts flowing through this also i current only through this also i current only which means what dear children two resistors are said to be in series if same amount of current can flow same amount of current can flow actually and what about potential difference the potential difference across the battery okay dear children that will be divided among the resistors so across this it is a v1 and the potential difference across this r2 will be v2 such a way that v is equal to v1 plus v2 v1 plus v2 so this is how two resistors are connected in series are connected in series now same resistors how can we connect in a parallel it is a first series mode. now we will see parallel children here is the first resistor and as it is given is a r1 only and one more resistor whose resistance is uh, it is r2 and here look at here both are connected these two terminals are connected at a common point and these two terminals are also connected at a common point on again these two are connected to the battery again tap key so this is how both are connected in a parallel now when you on this switch what happens current starts flowing so let us say here i current starts flowing but at this point what will happen current gets divided such a way that let us say here through this i1 is a current flowing through this i2 is a current is flowing again what will happen same amount of current will come same amount of current will come so which means what what we have to notice the children in a series connection current will be same through all resistors but whereas in a parallel connection the current gets divided such a way that we can write like this the total current is equal to the the sum of the currents which are flowing through the individual resistors so i is equal to i1 plus i2 then what about potential difference dear children so what are the potential difference will be there across the battery it will be same means across r1 also it is v only across r2 also it will be v only so two things we have to notice dear children 
in a series connection in a series connection what will happen amount of current will be same but potential difference gets divided whereas in a parallel connection current gets divided but whereas potential difference across all resistors remains same now let us see the fifth diagram dear children it is given that a uniform meter rule balances horizontally on a knife edge placed at 58 cm mark when a weight of 20 g force is suspended from one of its end and draw a diagram to show the arrangement setup so it's very important thing is that it is given uniform meter rule so let us take first uniform meter rule so let us say dear children it is uniform meter rule let us say Actually, uniform meter rule is equivalent to what 100 cm we know that why i am saying means sometimes it is given uniform half meter rule also so when it is given uniform meter rule dear children you should take 0 to 100 cm 0 to 100 cm whereas if uniform half meter rule is given we have take 0 to 50 cm only so now what it is given it is given that it is balanced it is balanced at 58 cm mark so let us say means knife edge is placed let us say this is 58 cm mark so it is 58 cm mark 58 cm mark and they are asking us to even to put 20 g force either of end either of one end either you can put left hand or right hand but with a, it is our common sense decision we have to think look at here this left left side from o to this point o to this point knife edge the length of the scale is more whereas this right side length of the scale is less so as a left side length of the scale is more definitely as it is a uniform one as it is a uniform scale the weight of this portion will be more than that of this portion then what will happen it will try to tilt in a anti clockwise direction it will try to tilt what will happen like this it will try to tilt anti clockwise direction to make it balance what we have to do we have to add the weight right side so that it will be balanced so whatever the 20 g force is given to children that should to be added that to be added on right side 20 g force to be added but it children so here where the total weight of the uniform meter rule will add dear children so as it is a regular body obviously exactly at 50 cm mark only what will happen total what will weight of the scale will act children if it was like a uniform uh, what we can say half meter rule so center of gravity will be exactly 25 cm mark but whereas for this the center of gravity will be the total weight the total weight of the scale will act exactly at 50 cm mark that is a w so let us say this is 50 cm mark so such as that this will be r1 and this will be r2 so children this is how actually we have to make a diagram for this given concept so here once you can apply the principle of moments then even you can calculate the weight of the rule weight of the rule that is a weight of the uniform meter rule you can calculate now sixth diagram dear children and you can see just uh, on the screen also it is given that so it is given that uh, incident light ray is like you know it is incidenting as shown in the figure and we have to complete the diagram till uh, light ray emerges out so let us make a diagram once again whatever is given so let us it is a b c d so this is a rectangular glass cup which is given and the light ray is incident like this so this how light ray is incident but did you learn here one very very important thing actually the point where many students will get confused is that so this is what actually uh, light ray some angle is given here with what angle here it is incident did you learn so this is given it is a 42 degrees it is a 42 degrees did you learn you should not forget one very important thing is the critical angle for glass air interface is glass air interface is 42 degrees now what happens you know many children they think that now they take it as a angle of incidence and they think that this is a point where light is moving from glass to air and angle of incidence is equal to critical angle then what will happen they will take light ray like this but it is a wrong nature why because whatever is given it is not angle of incidence so first we have to find the angle of incidence for that dear children at this point let us make a normal let us make a normal dear children so as it is completely digital it is a 90 degrees 
42 is left. 40 is gone. So how much is left? So this will be the angle of incident day children. So this is a very, very, very important day children. The angle between incident light ray and a normal drone is called actual angle of incidence. Out of this 90 here, 42 is gone. So here how much is left here? 48 degrees. So day children, the angle of incidence is how much day children? It is a 48 degrees. So let us see this is a point O. So at a point O, light is moving from denser to rarer medium. At the same time, angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle. Then what will happen? Light will undergo total internal reflection. So like this it will go. So this is how light will undergo total internal reflection. Total internal reflection. But teacher, again, what is happening? This light ray is going in a striking BD surface. So BD is what again separation between glass and air. So now at this point, let us say, at this point, let us make a normal in order to find the angle of incidence, in order to find the angle of incidence. Children, if you can observe here, it will be, so it will be 42 degrees, opposite angles, 42 degrees and this will be, oh, anyhow it is a normal, that is 90 degrees only perpendicular and here 90 plus 42. So how much will be left here? It will be 48. This will be now 48. As it is a 48 degrees day children, then what is the angle of incidence? So here, this will be the angle of incidence. Dear children, this will be 42 degrees. This will be 42 degrees. It's a very, 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 very important. Means, let us say at this point O dash, at this point O dash, light is moving from glass to air. That is denser to rarer medium only. But the thing is that angle of incidence is equal to critical angle. Children, whenever angle of incidence is equal to critical angle, what will happen? The angle of refraction will be 90 degrees. That is, light ray grazes the interface between the two mediums. So, here BD is the interface between the two mediums. Then what will happen here? Light will go like this. So, this is how actually light grazes the surface. So, like this, light ray will go. This is what actually refractal light ray. This is refractal light ray. Such as that, this will be detailed and will be how much it is? 90 degrees and finally this is how light ray will emerges out okay children so this is what actually so here you should be very careful at this point only whatever is given is not angle of incidence it is an angle with this interface and the incident light ray from this we have to calculate angle of incidence so here at a point o light is undergoing total inter reflection whereas o dash point at this point this is a case of critical angle and next diagram is related to the pulley concept. So, what is given here? Name the type of single pulley that has an uh, ideal mechanical advantage is equal to draw a label diagram of the pulley mentioned by you. So, decision, which single uh, pulley will have mechanical advantage equal to 2? So, that is undoubtedly it is single mobile pulley because for a single fixed pulley, the mechanical advantage is 1. So, here it is given that mechanical advantage is 2. So, it is a single mobile pulley, which means what? So, in this question, directly they are not asking us to draw the single mobile pulley. So, here it is clue is given. That is what mechanical advantage is given to. So, with that, we have to think that it is a single mobile pulley. Now, let us draw the diagram. So, it will be, so children here xy is a rigid support, rigid support. So, this is the point of suspension here and here is a single mobile pulley. So, such way that what happens to children? Here is a load. So, it is very, 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 very important. So, load will be attached to this like this. It is a load. L O A D. But children, you should not forget that the direction of load. It may raise upward, but its direction is always vertically downwards only. Always vertically downwards only. And this is a point where we will be applying the effort vertically upwards. This is a point of application of effort. So, it is a effort direction. It is a effort direction. Then, whenever any uh, load is attached to this string D children, definitely there will be tension. The tension will be developed. What is the direction of tension D children? Here it will be, this is 
so the direction is of tension is very very important we have to show and here will be toward this point so children this is how actually single mobile pulley single mobile pulley so it is given that the clue is mechanical advantage of single mobile pulley is to mechanical advantage of single mobile is to at the same time velocity ratio also to only velocity ratio also to only so what is the purpose of single mobile pulley children it is used as a force multiplier it is used as a force multiplier force multiplier it's a very 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 important so this is how we can make the single mobile pulley diagram children so the important thing what we have to note is especially many children will forget to show the direction of load and even direction of tensions in the string also okay children uh, in this question so they are asking us to you know uh, one clue is given a lens forms upright and magnified image and they are asking us to what is the name of that lens and draw the ray diagram which is required children here we have two types of lens of course according to our syllabus we will be discussing about only two types one is a convex lens one is a concave lens the specialty of convex lens is that almost it all means in a first five cases it gives real image only but whereas in the sixth case only it gives virtual image and at the same time concave lens always gives virtual image only but both are giving virtual images only but what makes the difference the difference is that convex lens gives virtual image but it is an enlarged one whereas concave lens will gives virtual image only but it is diminished image so in a given question they are saying that it is a magnified so as, as it is a upright means what virtual so virtual magnified means it is a convex lens only so the given lens is a convex lens only now we have to make a ray diagram for that look at here is a children it is l l dash is a convex lens and this is a optic center such a that this point will be f1 and this is double the focal length will be it is a 2f1 whereas right side this is f2 and here this is going to be 2f2 and it children so in which case convex lens forms upright in a magnified image so the case where object is placed between focus and optic center so this is how actually here the object is placed the object is placed between focus and optic center now what we have to do children here we have take a two light ray consider two light rays the first light ray is moving parallel to the principal axis parallel to the principal axis let us say this light ray is moving parallel to the principal axis and one more light ray is moving through let us say optic center it is the second is optic center so moving through optic center which in already we have learned if any light ray is moving parallel to the principal axis of convex lens or, con or convex lens what happens after refraction it has to pass through the focus whereas the light ray which is passing through the optic center region will go undeviated so let us complete that light ray this is first refracted light ray which passes through the op focus and second light ray second refracted light ray it will go undeviated but thing is that each other whatever we are getting they are diverse light rays and they can never meet they can never meet then what i do whenever each other two refracted light rays the refracted light rays are not meeting we have to extend back let us extend back so when you extend back the children this is a point where they are appearing to meet so children let us say with a dotted line so this position will indicate with a dotted line children so means this will be the position of the image this will be the position of the image look at here so here a b is object the children and here a dash b dash is a image so this is how actually convex lens forms upright and magnified image listen this is a case of even simple microscope also even sometimes they will ask you the question so which lens can be used as a simple microscope and explain or support your answer with a proper ray diagram means this is a diagram which we have to make so again here two points the light ray which is moving parallel to the principal axis always passes through the focus only but whereas the light ray which is passing through the optic center will go undeviated but in this case these two refracted light rays are not meeting so what we have done just we extended the light rays back so they are appearing to meet that's what here virtual image is formed children virtual image is always linked with a dotted line only 
now just uh, ninth diagram what actually given detail here so draw a sketch showing the displacement of the body executing uh, damped vibration against time so children once again let us recall what actually damped vibrations so the vibrations with a decreasing amplitude is called actually damped vibration the best example is you take a, any vibrating body in presence of air so will be making actually damped vibrations so let us see how this so children here amplitude must be taken on y axis time must be taken on x axis let us see once so children here is y axis let us see uh, on y axis we are taking amplitude that is a displacement or else you can write it is a displacement children here displacement displacement is taken on y axis whereas here time we are taking on x axis let us say here is a time let us take time teacher to get the uh, you know best diagram for this like you know damped vibrations so initially let us fix from here to here let us take some height example from here for example from here to here you are taking for example 10 centimeters same you take from here to here also that you will get the best diagram for this now so look at so this is how actually we are going to get finally it is going to be zero so if you can see the children what is happening here as time passes as time passes what is happening the amplitude so this will show actual amplitude the amplitude gradually decreasing gradually decreasing so why the amplitude is gradually decreasing because the body is vibrating in air as i said so there will be some external force to overcome that external resistive force dear children the vibrating body has to spend some energy so as some energy extra energy is spent to overcome that air friction external force so what is happening so the amplitude so it's it loses its energy so as it loses its energy so what happens its amplitude gradually decreases so this is how actually we can make a diagram you can see here so amplitude is as time passes as time passes what is happening dear children so the amplitude gradually decreasing and after some time what happens you know finally the vibrations are ceased out means the body stops vibrating also because after certain time what happens complete energy is lost complete energy is lost so what will happen then the body stop vibrating so this is how actually we can make a sketch like a displacement time versus in the case of damped vibrations yes teacher in this 10th diagram it is asked to draw the block and tackle system with velocity ratio of 4 it's very very important dear children so here the clue is given velocity ratio so velocity ratio is given how much dear children it is given 4 so it's very important thing is that velocity ratio will give you the idea about the number of pulleys so here as the velocity ratio is 4 is given so you should think that in that block and tackle system 4 pulleys will be there so what is a block dear children the metallic frame in which pulleys are arranged so we are we have two blocks actually upper block lower block upper block is fixed lower block is mobile what is a tackle tackle is a string which connects a number of pulleys in a different blocks actually now dear children as the velocity ratio is 4 how many pulleys we should take it is a four pulleys dear children four means it's an even number even number means what dear children in upper block and lower block so equal number of pulleys will be there which means what in upper block two pulleys and a lower block two pulleys let us see here how the diagram is going to be so children here is a rigid support so this is how actually it is upper block and lower block so here upper block just uh, so here is fixed okay children and here is lower block and it's one more very 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 important thing is that actually so whenever there are even number of pulleys dear children the hook will be hook is attached to the upper block one which means what the second end of the string must be connected to this only okay children fine now now let us attach the two blocks with a string it will be like this to this point dear children and dear children this is a point where we will apply effort where we will apply effort and each and every segments of the string dear children so we have to show the tension so each end and each children here load is attached and each children the load direction show vertically downwards only so dear children uh, this is how actually we can make a block and tackle system 
with a velocity ratio 4. If velocity ratio 5 is given digital means extra pulley is added where upper block only it is added and one more very important thing is that the children here if even number of pulleys are there the second end the hook should be attached to the upper block only if here odd number of pulleys are there the hook should be attached to the lower block only okay children so this is how actually we can make so children these are the uh, most expected uh, diagrams so if you can practice these diagrams dear children well very very if you have a good practice with these diagrams you know not only for diagrams dear children even application based questions also you can get it so hope you will have a great practice and hopefully you will be doing the best in exam when these diagrams will be asked okay dear children thank you so much all the very best